Hey all, today we're going to talk about insulin and uh, fat storage and where people get things wrong pretty badly about insulin. Uh, and and the, the kind of the thesis is that insulin will actually keep you leaner, exogenous insulin use. So first let's talk about what, it, what insulin is. So every cell in uh, the body is going to have an insulin receptor. And I just draw it like this. This is how I think of receptors. It's easy to think of. And you'll have insulin, you know, the hormone insulin floating around, and you'll see the receptor, and it'll fit in that receptor. What that does is it triggers some proteins to shuffle around in the cell that allows an influx of nutrients and no exflux <laughs> of nutrients. So, you, so when that insulin's bound to that cell, that cell can't release energy, can't release, you know, fat for energy or, or glycogen for use as energy but it will increase the uptake of amino acids into the cell and facilitate you know, the uptake of other nutrients. And so why is that important? Why does insulin keep you leaner? So you always hear, you know, you can't eat fat with insulin. You have to be careful insulin will make you fat. Well, the reason insulin makes people fat is because they use it incorrectly. For one, they'll, uh, they'll take insulin and then they'll, they'll eat enough to, to cover the insulin to not go hypo. Well, how do you know that's, that's the right amount of food to not keep you fat? I mean, if I take 10 IUs of insulin and I eat 150 grams of carbs, yes, I don't go hypo, but how do I know I could assimilate 150 grams of carbs? I don't know. And so the proper way to really use it is to have a set diet. You should have a diet. And so you should have a certain macronutrient list, a calorie count, a certain carbohydrate count, uh, and, and then, then tailor the use to that. And so let's say, on my, let's say someone on one of my diets is eating 850 grams of carbs, on their high day and we've found out that that whatever else we're doing throughout across the week whatever we're doing with training whatever we're doing, we're doing with cardio whatever we're doing with protein whatever we're doing with fat we know that doing this on their high carb day has not caused fat gain so now what happens if we add insulin if we add insulin and we don't eat any more calories how can the insulin store more calories as fat than, it, than we were storing before you know you think about it we have we were eating this and we were not storing fat. Now we add something that's going to increase the, the ch likelihood of protein synthesis and it's going to increase the amount of glycogen storage. That's actually going to reduce the, the likelihood of fat storage. And what I mean by, by that is while this, what, so you eat this many grams of carbs and these many calories or whatever it is and, you, and you're not gaining fat. Now we do something that say is going to increase the amount of glycogen that you store by another 25 grams or about 100 calories. So if we were eating that much and not storing fat and we now we take something that can store an extra 25 grams of glycogen that might otherwise have been stored as fat, that's 25 grams that we're not, not only are we not gaining fat, we're, but we're storing more glycogen. And then, then the same thing, let's say that this action of, of drawing amino acids into the cell increases protein synthesis by, it's going to be a small amount, probably not even this much, let's say another 5 grams, or about uh, 20 calories. So now to combine, we have 120 calories that can be stored as glycogen and synthesized as new muscle protein that theoretically may not have occurred without the insulin. That's 120 calories that now is being stored. Now remember, when I say we're not storing fat, we're still, we, if you eat calories that you aren't burning, you're storing it in the body. Without insulin, these things may be stored as fat. With insulin, these, we're saying this won't be stored as fat. And so what that means is if we've set an act, we've already had a diet that we know we're not storing fat with, or we're not gaining fat. I mean, there, you're always gonna have some turnover. You might burn a little bit of fat during cardio, burn a little bit of fat during your workout store a little bit of fat in the diet and the net uh you know the net change over a 24 hour period is no additional fat is stored well if you add insulin here and you have this and these numbers are just pulled out of my, my my ass these might not mean anything it might this might be five and this might be one but the point is is that with the insulin some excess calories that otherwise may have been stored as fat can now be stored as glycogen and synthesized as new muscle protein rather than fat the net thermodynamic change is, is it's, it's equal. We have, there's no, we're not eating any more calories, we're not burning any more calories. All we've done is change, because of the, the, uh, the protein, uh, amino acid uptake at the cell that the insulin does and the anti-catabolic nature of the, of the insulin, what we've done is we've 
we've shifted how, so we, we store, there's, we can store energy in the body as protein, muscle, as carbs, glycogen, and then as fat, adipose tissue. So what we've done is we've taken a small amount here that might have otherwise been stored as fat, and we're now able to store it as protein and carbs. You, you know, you add those, bo those three boxes up, the first way or the second way, the total number is the same, that's your calorie intake, only now we've got less fat, more glycogen, and, and more muscle protein synthesis. And so this, even if it's, even if it's a couple of grams, the rate of protein synthesis is, low, is lower than most people think. To gain 20 pounds of muscle in a year, you're only synthesizing about 25 grams of new muscle protein per day. That's if every, that's if muscle is only made of protein, which isn't the case, but that's an easy way, it's just easy round numbers. That's only about one gram per hour. That's it. That's how fast you're, you're eating a chicken breast with 50 grams of protein in that hour <laughs> before you eat the next one or whatever. The most that can convert to new muscle is one gram. So if we can even change that by a couple of grams a day, we can dramatically increase the rate of muscle growth. And we're, we, do, we do it all without violating thermodynamics. We've stored the same number of calories in the body both ways, with or without the insulin. All the insulin does is it optimizes how those nutrients are stores, stored. Increases the ability to store glycogen, increases the likelihood that amino acids will be synthesized as new muscle proteins, and decreasing the, the ability of those things to be stored as fat because they're being stored elsewhere and we only have the set number of calories that we eat. And so that's one thing so misunderstood about insulin uh, and it, because people use it wrong. If you want to get fat, take insulin and then eat enough food to make sure you don't go hypo. If you want to get bigger, leaner, more muscular, have a diet that works and properly add the use of insulin to that diet without changing the diet to maximize how those calories are stored. That's it.